I myself have always collected three-dimensional objects, toys, and back in the 90s, I was really into the Hello Kitty thing. I was really fascinated with Sanrio products. I was really fascinated with the concept, like, okay, here you can take this basically featureless character, right? Kitty doesn't even have a mouth, right? Um, she has no voice. Uh, and it's not associated with a, 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 another property. There's no, there wasn't like a TV show or a kid's book or a movie. Kitty was invented, you know, she sprang fully formed from the forehead of Zeus, basically, right? She's whole, you know, right there. And it's like such perfect design that Kitty could be anything to anybody. You know, I know people like Kitty's goth, Kitty's sexual, she's non-sexual, Kitty's for children. Kitty's really a tongue, you know, anybody can, uh, like this mirror, it's like a mirror item. And that was just really interesting to me on lots of levels. A, I liked the way the stuff looked. I was really into Kuropi the Frog, too. I used to collect Kuropi stuff. I was really into the look of it. I'd always been a fan of Japanese animation, I mean, going back to the 70s. This was different, though. This sort of, like, character license, character merchandise thing was really, I really got into it just as an intellectual exercise. And I was like, and what's ironic is I was spending a lot of time in Japan hanging out with some pretty high tone people doing sort of, like, conceptual art shows and, like, weird high-end commercial gigs and stuff. And on my first visit to them, you know, they're like, what do you want to do? First visit in Japan. And they all, you know, they wanted to hear the usual thing. I want to go to the hot springs. I want to do all these, like, really sort of, like, I want to climb Mount Fuji. I want to do all this, like, normal, like, things that... And I was like, I want to go to Puro Land, which is, like, Hello Kitty Land in Tokyo, or outside Tokyo. And they were like, they are just like, what? They were aghast. Because over there in the 90s, Kitty was seen as lower class garbage. And if you were like an adult male that was interested in it, it was like primarily like a little girl's toy. There was something kind of weird about that. So they were sort of not into that, right? So of course me, the more they weren't into it, the more I was like, no, this is really cool. I wanted to push it. And so the way I really got started with the toy thing, why I thought it was important was like, okay, like they sort of like, well, maybe you should design your own, your own kind of kitty character. And I'm like, I can do that. And so I did like basically the Labbit character, which is my mainstream licensed character. And the initial concept for the Labbit is he is like who Kitty booty calls at three, you know, like Kitty needs a booty call at 3 a.m. It's Labbit because he's like unemployed and he's dirty and he's nasty, but he's kind of hot, right? So I was like, okay, this is like, you know, dear Daniel's getting, you know, doesn't know what's going on kind of a thing. Seriously, you know, right? So, and they're like, oh, you know, actually that might actually work. And then they started like, like maybe you're not like totally insane. And ironically enough, I've been able to, I mean, it's not at San Rio level by any means, but like, you know, I've sold millions of them, of that character in various formats and many more to come.